Hello and welcome to Insight Ophthalmology. If you are new to this channel, I welcome you to this lecture on blood supply of optic nerve. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for joining again with us. Today we are discussing the blood supply of the optic nerve. In the previous video, I already told you that the optic nerve is divided into four parts that is the intraocular, intraorbital, intracanalicular and the intracranial part. So the blood supply of the optic nerve will also be divided in a similar manner. So let us start first with the intraocular part of the optic nerve and its blood supply. I already told you that the intra ocular part of the optic nerve is divided into three four parts it is the surface nerve fiber layer the prelaminar region the lamina cribrosa region and the retrolaminar region and the blood supply also has to be studied in the similar manner considering all these four parts of the intraocular part of the optic nerve in with the surface nerve fiber layer so in this diagram i'm going to mark the surface nerve fiber layer which is the innermost layer of the optic nerve head which is actually made up of the nerve fiber layer and few astrocytes so how is the surface nerve fiber layer supplied by the surface nerve fiber layer is basically supplied by the retinal arterioles that is the branches of the central retinal artery Okay, so this is the central retinal artery and the central retinal artery is again dividing into the superior and the inferior branches and those branches are again dividing, they will divide into the superior, into the various four arcades. Okay, so it is basically through these capillaries and through these branches of the central retinal arteries which will anastomose and give rich blood supply to the surface nerve fiber layer okay however in a few uh, patients occasionally there will be an artery which is derived from the posterior ciliary artery okay which is coming from the posterior ciliary artery and this artery is called the cilio retinal artery we told you that the surface nerve fiber layer is basically supplied from the branches of the central retinal artery as they come into our fundus and they're dividing into these various branches. However, in a few patients, occasionally a branch will come from the posterior ciliary artery also. The short posterior ciliary artery will give a branch and this uh, vessel is called the cilioretinal artery. So over here we can see this artery which is not exactly taking its origin from the central retinal artery over here. It is arising separately. So this is called the cilioretinal artery and uh, this cilioretinal artery is of advantage in patients when there is a central retinal artery occlusion. So what happens is when this central retinal artery which is giving branches in the optic nerve head gets occluded the blood supply to the entire retina would be cut off okay the entire retina would be cut off of its blood supply and that is the reason in central retinal artery the entire retina will look almost whitish in color because it is not getting its blood supply however there is an area over here which you can see which is still maintaining a little bit of its red hue and why is this area maintaining little bit of red hue is because of the presence of cilio retinal art uh, the cilio retinal artery okay it's the cilio retinal artery so what happens is in few patients who are blessed to have the cilio retinal artery the macula would be spared in case of central retinal artery occlusion so the cilio retinal artery presence might uh, serve as a blessing in such patients about what happens to the prelaminar region that is the region which is present just in front of the lamina cribrosa so let me mark that for you over here in green so this is our pre-laminar region okay so this pre-laminar region how is how does it get its blood supply so as a revision i already told you that the surface nerve fiber layer it's getting its blood supply prob uh, mainly from the retinal circulation okay so the retinal central retinal artery is dividing and uh and occasionally some people will have the cilio retinal artery also which will supply but the pre-laminar region is getting its blood supply from the ciliary region that is this blood vessel over here this blood vessel this blood vessel is nothing but the posterior ciliary artery the short and the long posterior ciliary arteries right so this short posterior ciliary artery will give a branch to this region of 
prelaminar region that is the region which is present in front of the lamina fibrosa and give it its blood supply okay so the prelaminar region is getting its blood supply from the short posterior ciliary arteries all right yeah so next coming to another region which is the region of lamina cribrosa that is the region in which these fenestrations you can see all right so this is the region of lamina cribrosa so how does the lamina cribrosa gets its blood supply say the lamina cribrosa is also getting its blood supply from the branches of the posterior short posterior ciliary artery so this short posterior ciliary artery will also give branches to this region of lamina cribrosa apart from that they also form an anastomosis here and this anastomosis is called the arterial circle of zin okay so this anastomosis is called the arterial circle of zin so it's a very important thing to know that the arterial circle of zin is supplying the lamina region of the intraocular part of the optic nerve coming to the last part of the intraocular part of the optic nerve which is the retrolaminar region of the optic nerve so the retrolaminar region of the optic nerve is getting its blood supply from both the retinal portion and also from the ciliary portion okay so both the ciliary portion as well as the retinal portion will give blood supply to the ret uh, retrolaminar region of the optic nerve it is this uh, central retinal artery this will be giving both centrifugal branches and also few centripetal branches which are coming from the pile plexus here okay these are coming from the pile plexus actually what happens is is that the ophthalmic artery will actually have one branch this is the central retinal artery which is going and dividing into the various capillaries and arterioles inside the optic uh, inside the fundus and giving supply to the nerve fiber layer and then we have another branch which is coming the short posterior ciliary arteries which are giving a branch and supplying the prelaminar region and then giving a branch also into the sclera and uh, supplying the laminar region and also forming the anastomosis the arterial circle of zin apart from that they will or they will also give branches in the pia mater covering of the optic nerve and form the pile plexus all around this optic nerve and these pile plexus will also send branches inside and because they are sending the branches towards the center these branches are called the centripetal branches okay so these centripetal branches which are coming from the pile plexus along with that the central retinal artery also is giving certain uh, branches towards outside which are called the centrifugal branches because they are going towards outside so these two uh, circulation that is the retinal circulation and also the ciliary circulation they both are supplying the retrolaminar region okay so this is how the retrolaminar region is supplied so in this diagram this one over here is the pile plexus right now let us talk about the uh, blood supply of the intraorbital part of the optic nerve that is the part which is present inside the orbit so as i already told you in the previous video that the intraorbital part of the optic nerve is very closely related to the ophthalmic artery and this ophthalmic artery will be giving various branches along the intraorbital course and it crosses from the lateral side to the medial side and also it is giving an important branch which is called the central retinal artery and this central retinal artery is going inferiorly and inferomedially it enters it within the substance of the optic nerve apart from that this ophthalmic artery will also give branches like the uh, short posterior ciliary artery and the long posterior ciliary artery and these posterior ciliary arteries are mainly going and supplying the intraocular part of the optic nerve just uh, how what we have seen just now okay so now let us talk about how does this intraorbital part of the optic nerve gets blood supply so the intraorbital part of the optic nerve gets its blood supply basically from two systems that is the system of blood vessels which are actually wrapping around the optic nerve this is called the periaxial system and 
the axial system that is the vessels which are actually present within the optic nerve itself within the substance of the optic nerve and giving blood supply to the optic nerve okay so starting with the periaxial system the periaxial system is actually very simple they are all the blood vessels which are present around the optic nerve so what are these vessels which are present around the optic nerve in the intraorbital part these are the ophthalmic artery okay the long and the short posterior ciliary arteries okay these ones the lacrimal artery which is not so important and the central retinal artery before it actually pierces the optic nerve so these are the six branches of the internal carotid artery which will be actually supplying the intraorbital part of the optic nerve from outside and therefore they form what is called as the periaxial system now coming to the axial system the axial system basically has three main arteries which are going to supply the substance of the optic nerve so the first one is the intraneural branches of the central retinal artery that means this central retinal artery it is going to enter inside and then it is giving various branches over here so all these branches are the intraneural that means within the optic nerve branches of the central retinal artery which is in turn a branch of the ophthalmic artery apart from that we have another artery which is called the central collateral artery it is nothing but before the central retinal artery actually pierces and goes inside the optic nerve it gives a another branch and the branch is called the central collateral artery and then we have another artery which is called the central artery of the optic nerve which finally will become the central retinal artery all right so these are the three branches which will form the axial system of blood supply for the intraorbital part of the optic nerve is the next part of the optic nerve it is the intracanalicular part of the optic nerve which is present between inside the optic canal okay so what is the vessel which is in close relation to the optic nerve in the optic canal it is the ophthalmic artery so this is the major artery which is going to supply the intracanalicular part of the optic nerve by by forming the pile plexus all right yeah next we have the intracranial part of the optic nerve that is the part of the optic nerve after it leaves the optic canal and enters our anterior cranial fossa and lies above the cavernous sinuses the intracranial part of the optic nerve and its blood supply before i go into the details of its blood supply i want you to uh, look have a look at this diagram over here this shows the circle of villus and this is our internal carotid artery and this is and below above that is our optic chiasms right so it is it should be very clear that this diagram is as if you are looking from below so our internal carotid arteries are actually present below the level of the optic nerve in the intracranial portion okay and above the optic nerve we can see our anterior cerebral arteries are coming and they are being joined together using the anterior communicating arteries okay and uh, there are certain red color vessels that we see over here these are small small vessels here these are nothing but the superior hypophyseal artery why are they called superior hypophyseal artery is because our hypophyseal gland that is a pituitary gland is located below the level of the optic chiasm so these blood vessels which are called the superior hypophyseal they are going to go and supply the superior part of our hypophysis and that is the reason they are called superior hypophyseal arteries okay so with this knowledge in the background let me tell you now what are the branches which supply the intracranial part of the optic nerve okay so the first one that we have is the recurrent branch from the anterior superior hypophyseal artery okay so i already showed you what is the superior hypophyseal artery so this artery is going to give a branch and supply from the inferior aspect of the optic nerve okay so if we have this is the optic nerve the inferior aspect of the optic nerve will be supplied by this superior hypophyseal artery okay so whenever there is a damage to this superior hypophyseal artery it is the superior field 
of vision that will be lost because in the intracranial portion the inferior part of the optic nerve is carrying the fibers for the superior visual field okay i hope that is clear now coming to the next intracranial uh, vessel is the anterior cerebral arteries now in this diagram i already told you that the anterior cerebral arteries are present above the level of the optic nerve and therefore they are going to supply what they are going to supply the superior aspect of the optic nerve so they are supplying the superior aspect of the optic nerve which are controlling the inferior visual field so whenever there is a defect in the anterior cerebral artery defect in the blood supply because of the anterior cerebral artery it is the inferior visual field loss which will happen okay apart from that what other arteries are were there the anterior communicating artery so anterior communicating artery and then finally we have also have the ophthalmic artery which will take its origin right so these are the basic four arteries out of which the two important ones are the anterior superior hypophyseal artery the anterior cerebral artery and the third important is the anterior communicating and a very less amount from the ophthalmic artery i hope that was clear if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section thank you and have a good day